<laughs> Good morning to you and thank you so much for giving it on BS Television. I always love the banter that goes on before we get on air. But it is a Friday and definitely it is time for the media round table as we get you through the different stories that made headlines during this week. Of course, I say the election fever seems to be coming in quite high and... Um, probably some people are counting down about eight months or so into their political party activities. For example, primaries, and then through that we'll go to nominations, go to the um, uh, campaigns before we can get to have the election. So for you, is thinking about that uh, elections are in 2026. People are already thinking elections are coming through in the next year. But of course, we'll be looking at um, some amendments in the electoral roadmap because of funding issues. Um, that the Electoral Commission had to think twice and revise some of these um, aspects of scheduled activities because they just couldn't be able to take place um, as and when they were expected. Will they uh, guarantee a free and fair election? Do we have those um, intended electoral reforms that we would have wanted, but unfortunately they don't seem to just be coming through? What next, especially as um, opposition political parties continue to urge for these reforms to come through? But as well, talking about political parties, the Attorney General came through with interesting statistics, especially with regard to accountability in the political parties because they get taxpayers money under the political parties and organizations act uh, all parties that have representation in parliament get a particular percentage of money with regard to their percentage of representation in parliament but they're not just giving the accountability and accountability from government what exactly are they preaching water and taking wine there are much more of the stories that we're going to be delving into in just a bit allow me introduce to you my panel and i just can't wait for the energies the energies here before we got on air uh were just enough to tell me what kind of show we're going to have okay i'll start from my extreme right i have uh, Sir simon muyanga lutaya um, still a journalist, everyone here, whether you took a sabbatical, whether you have decided to just go out, once a journalist, always one. That's what I've always believed. But he's now gotten into training. You want to create other Sir Simons. Okay, other Simons, because the Sir comes different. Good morning, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need all that Bible full of words to, to introduce me? Good morning, Mildred. <laughs> Your looks said it all. Here, I'm always glad to be here. Pleasure. Uh, I think... It's my way of contributing to my country. And of course, advancing the career, the same career where we want to have more and more people coming through. Seated right next to Kenneth Anderson Lukwago, he's been complaining about something particular and uh, everyone kept telling him what is written and what is actually done are two different things in the country. Um, Kenneth, good morning to you and thank you so much for coming through. Very good morning to you, Mildred. It's always a pleasure to be here to share with the public. Okay. Fresh from Utopia. What do you mean? Anderson lives in a country. That's what he believes should be done, and he wants to fight for what should be done the right way. <laughs> He's not living in Utopia. I protect you, <clears throat> Kenneth. I protect you on the show. Very weak protector. <laughs> you know, the, the, in law they say he who alleges must prove oh. so. I will not argue a lot with him. But I, me, I, I belong to a class of people who actually thinks um, our country can be better, we can do things differently, mm. and go to the next level where we want to go. So whoever believes that uh, uh, certain things are being done differently and yet the law says something else, yeah. I don't Even the Bible them. says you need to have faith, and a faith as small as a mustard seed. Can we all not. live by hope. Uh, that's <laughs> the most important faith thing. And not by sight. Mm. Okay, uh, I hope you're not opening up a church very soon. Stay in journalism. We still want you there. But of course, I do have, uh, because we will be talking about quite a lot of um, issues regarding political parties, and I am very, very grateful to have the executive director of the Interparty Organization for Dialogue, but also he's a journalist who decided, he told, when I said he is on a sabbatical, he said, I don't think I have hopes of getting back, but he's been a journalist and that journalism mind never goes away. That is uh, Lawrence uh, Sirambala. A very good morning to you and happy to have you on the show. This is the first time I'm having you on the Media Roundtable. Good morning, Mildred, and good morning, uh, the viewers out there. It's my pleasure to be here um, uh, to also make a contribution to the discussion. Mm. Yes, it is true. I was uh, a very active journalist. 
until he decided uh, that. We won't ask why you some of them leave. <laughs> we won't ask no, why. I'm turning this side because um, I used to have uh, serious altercations with him mm. in the corridors <laughs> of parliament uh, when uh, I was a parliamentary reporter and a uh, news editor mm. until when, uh, like you said, I took a sabbatical. But again, uh, the ethos of being a journalist and any other profession will always, there will always be a trace. Mm. So even when mm. I am active with um, the political parties and the iPod, I still bring, you know, my the traits of yeah, that. The journalistic perspective never sure. goes away. Sam here, I do have uh, Moses Mulondo, my immediate right. Moses, always a pleasure to have you here. He's also been in the leadership of parliamentary journalists, right? For quite yes, a bit. I, He's I, I, I was president of Uganda, Uganda Parliamentary, Parliamentary Press Association yes. for two terms. Okay. Thank you very much. You handed uh, over peacefully, right? Of course, <laughs> I did. Thank, Say hello to uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mildred, for the opportunity you've given me and my colleagues to make a contribution in nation building. Mm. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much as well for sparing your time to be with us. Gentlemen, it is a pleasure having you. The way Simon looks at people in his, <laughs> <laughs> in his glasses. But it's okay. That's a conversation for another day. Let's delve into it. Accountability. And I love, I love the fact that the reason why I said I'm glad that we have iPod on here, because the conversation of the idea of party um, support did arise under conversations with regard to the inter-party organizations for dialogue uh, where they believed that these political parties, especially those who have representation in parliament, needed the support, they needed to get money to carry on with different um, activities in their space. Of course, there has always been this conversation of why not every other political parties, but some of the people have said then you would be um, calling for briefcase parties because at the end of the day they know they will be getting government, I mean money, from the government coffers. But even when that money is given, given the fact that it is a uh, public money or taxpayers' money, there is accountability that is expected. That has been the biggest, I think, crocodile or dog or whatever of those dangerous animals you want to refer to, not only in the ruling national resistance movement, but also in the other political parties. Sir Simon, I want to start with you particularly because um, I don't know which party you belong to right now. That's PLU, right? Is it a party? Okay, you said it's a civic organization. What do you know okay. as a journalist? Yeah, it's a, it a civic organization, group? as you say, but you definitely belong to the <laughs> Forum for Democratic Change. Why I'm talking to you on that regard, you also were leading uh, parliament, um, I mean the opposition in parliament, as a party then. And that meant the bigger chunk of the money for political parties would come to that party um, <laughs> as FPC. Why do you think it's very hard for political parties to do accountability? Thank you, Mildred. First, I want to appreciate the principle because the growth of democracy in our country has come a long way. <clears throat> there are things that we earlier thought were not even possible. Mm. At the time, the proposal to have political parties funded as introduced, one would imagine it's something that will never happen. Yeah. And I want <clears throat> to thank government, first of all, for the will that from the time that was enacted into our laws, it has been done. Number two, I believe the country appreciates why it was necessary for us to grow other political parties. Mm. Because even when you have a ruling party, you keep calling these alternative governments. So if you think that they will one time become government, then it's better you spend on them to prepare them, you invest in them to prepare their infrastructure, so that while uh, later in future when you have an opportunity to have them in leadership, they are properly prepared. Number three, I am happy with the, the way, you know accountability issues are everywhere. Mm. Even the people asking accountability have accountability questions over their heads. But Two we need, to, don't give, make a right, we need to give credit where it is due. If you look at parties like the national unity platform <coughs> and the way they have used some money. The Baganda have a saying, it is Syria, Yole Samubiri. NUP has shown that they can do something with this money. I don't mind about the, the other question, but they, they have 
offices established in a very short time, in a record time, earlier than anybody else has ever done it. Number two, they have an academy, a leadership training school. That to me, even without asking the other questions, it gives me the thinking that NUP believes that leadership is not anything that anybody should come by. It's a process. <coughs> There's an opportunity to train. My former party, the Democratic Party, tried it under UID to have this kind of training, but we never went up to that level. Mm. Now, what the NUP has done, even before we ask them about these accountability issues, is first that they have not taken this money to themselves. They have put things that are lasting, things that will help beyond who we see today, things that will train leaders, and, and I believe government also appreciates the role of training leaders, because many of those trained in opposition are now serving in, in government. We have history of many of these. So it means that a leader is a leader, whatever he emerges from the issues that is he prepared to be able to serve. Your question, why is it hard for political parties to account? To me, I think whoever is asking that is even uh, a vulture. So I am a vulture. <laughs> it is me who has asked you that. You and your friends who think <laughs> like that. Because, no, we, because we, we expect, we, we, uh, Simon, we, we Simon, we expect accountability because the money that is being given to you is to be able to do specific works, right? And secondly, it is taxpayers' money. V wonderful. Yes. Because the taxpayers' yeah. money, you know, you know, this is what we call training. Yeah, I'm a teacher. Yeah. You demand for accountability, but you also need to train these people how to account. They have to build personal and then a personal infrastructure okay. to prepare for such things. First, these political parties are new, the NUPs and the others. Is that an excuse? Because the focus now has been on NUP and now they use money to buy land and everywhere. But even the National Resistance Movement, which is older than them, has accountability queries. True. Therefore, what we should be doing now, to me, I would think if I were in government and suggesting, I would add a clause that helps, that allows the electoral commission to pay, to deploy accountability officers or accounting officers like it is done for government. That because we are investing money there, mm -hmm. then we have a personnel, a professional accountant or so, deployed for each of these political parties as an employee of the electoral commission, but just on that assignment to help them account. Because you know what, the way you use political money is different from the way you do want to spend money in the supermarket or elsewhere. For us, in politics, for example, there are things that you cannot write in your accountability. This I should tell you. There are things you cannot write. Whatever you see people writing is cosmetic. Much of this is for face value. But there are things in the point that you cannot account. You spent people, money on, but it is how do you, an insight. Okay. For, for example, we have spies. Parties have spies in other parties. You are funding someone to go to Busia to spy on your political opponents or to go and attend the political level of the NRM to see what they are doing. You are transporting them and everything. How do you write them? That being a payment to Simon Muyanga Lutaya for spy work against the NRM in Ibusia, some of those will remain quiet. So it is right that like the parties are demanding for accountability in parliament and elsewhere, mm -hmm. it is right that we demand for accountability from them. But the tone, the force, the, 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 the way we, have, we are portraying it, it seems to suggest to me that we don't recognize that these are young political institutions that have to grow like any other. If government, which is 63 years old, still has accountability issues, is still staggering, and with huge sums of money, if government cannot explain how the money was used, how do you want to take my attention to NUP for 5 billion, to FDC for 30 billion? If it's about thug, they are all thugs. Okay, um, but I would still maintain two wrongs don't make a right. So, um, let me come to you, Kenneth. Uh, Sam, <coughs> Sam Simon seems to think that uh, because the others are not accounting, they should not be in the same space, probably, uh, to ask for accountability. But also seems to say these are people 
who are still growing, they may not have accountability experience, for lack of a better word, um, and yet this is taxpayers' money at the end of the day. All right, uh, <clears throat> I, I want to begin by uh, updating the, the viewers uh, mm. uh, what exactly we are talking about now. From the Auditor General's report, um, political parties receive, from what I have seen annually, about 44.9 billion shillings. Sure. This is the money that is shared to them. And it's shared out based on what they call the numerical strength, the number, the, of, the number of MPs that you have in parliament. And for, from the start, I want to disagree with that formula because that's where there's also a very huge problem. Because if, if you say that uh, money is being allocated to political parties to help them uh, to actually become viable institutions, to sort of level the playing ground, mm -hmm. You, you can't really have this huge disparity. Let me give you an example. The NRM party gets 75.7% .7 of this money, which is... Because they have the majority. Listen, mm. because they, have, they get 34 billion shillings out of the 44 billion shillings. And then the rest of the political parties have to share the remaining amount. Is that really making a level play, playground? Now, for me, I think since these people are getting money from the taxpayers, they should be able to get money equally, equally. And even last time... Would that also be fair for a party yeah, that it, has... Yeah, it would be fair because, you see, the more you give to a political party, the more it becomes strong. Political parties need money to prepare candidates, <coughs> to finance their campaigns, and to be able to bring them to parliament. So if you continue to provide NRM more money than these other political parties, you are continuing to empower the NRM to continue with its numerical strength. How then do you bring these other political parties up? So for me, I think if they are sharing five billion, they told political parties receive five billion, so that they can all use that particular amount of money to address their needs as equal players in the country, because they're all equal. Okay. We should have a situation where another political party is given an opportunity to, to step over the others, because simply they have the numerical strength. Mind you, they did not begin from the same foundation. Like Miyanga said, some of these political parties are young. How do you start comparing them with the NRM which has been here for quite some time, where you have even leaders that benefited from the individual merit that encamp encompassed everybody? So for me, I still believe that they need to revisit this formula so that each political party, they can all receive equal amounts of money. Okay. They are all getting it from taxpayers. And Secondly, then the accountability. Is the, the accountability. I'm, Simon, I'm I'll thinking, come back to you. He totally seems to disagree with you I'm, on I'm, that. I'm, I'm thinking... I'm thinking uh, on the issues of accountability, mm. at the time they were planning to start giving these political parties money, there were inception meetings. They were told that this money, you are supposed to account for it. That's why each political party has a treasurer. Yeah. On top of that, they have accountants. They have an entire department where um, money is taken. Let's use the example of uh, the NRM, which is in power, um, where you would think that um, they are more conversant with the laws, but also they have the capacity to attract their best brains to be able to work at the secretariat. Uh, issues of accountability should not be rising at all. Uh, we are seeing a number of things. They did not remit payee. Uh, they did not declare the remaining balances. A, a little of things. Uh, there are political parties that do not maintain um, um, records of the assets that they have. Now, every viable institution should be able to do that. You should be able to know that at NBS we have 17 cameras. Hmm. Last month, Two cameras got spoiled. We need to, to do this and this. You should be able to have an inventory of the things that you have, which is part of the accountability. Because how are you going to tell us that uh, you spent money buying land, and then in your inventory, there is no land title to, to show that you actually bought a piece of land. So for me, uh, equality first. They should be getting the same money. Accountability should be a, a requirement. In fact, for me, I'm thinking if it you It is have, already a requirement. If you have... No, I'm saying it should be a requirement for you to get a next uh, batch of batch. funding. You know, if you, you're not meeting the, th the threshold, you should not be given um, more funding because we are looking at these political parties as the uh, inception centers for leaders, mm. to groom leaders. Uh, and whatever happens in a political party is likely to show us what will happen when they're actually in power. I don't want to match the accountability issues that we have in government right now with the NRM party, but one can clearly say that... Uh, uh, it's glaring. There are certain things to show. Um, so I think from the start, accountability should be very important. These political parties should be able to account, and I believe that any political party that does not uh, 
meet the threshold as far as accountability is concerned, mm. should not be given more, more funding money yeah. until they do. Until they do. Oh, oh, okay, Lawrence, um, exactly, you're working with the organization, number one, that brought up the idea, number two, that works with all of them. I don't know whether NUP officially finally agreed to come through because they said we are not going to be a part of the inter-party organization for dialogue. But whereas you um, pay attention to those as well, the money comes from the taxpayers. And young, old, or whatever, you know that accountability is key. Even in homes, you know that I have 10,000 shillings. Um, how did I get to spend it? Why does accountability seem to be a very huge conversation across all of them? Like I said, even the ruling party is not uh, spared. Yeah, thank you, Mildred. I think before we even get into the question of the ability of the political parties to effectively account for the public funds they receive, mm. there are things we need to uh, have at the back of our mind, back or the front, whichever. One, these leaders are a reflection of our society. Okay. We are a very corrupt society. And um, I think it's, um, it's some sort of midget thinking to, to put accountability at only funds. Mm. Look, you have Ugandans who behave in a manner, they will drive in the opposite direction of a one way, they will exploit any opportunity to their advantage at, at the moment of availability. Okay? Mm. Now, that's already a behavior. And this is something that has been inculcated in us over a period of time. And we are the very people that are going to take on the leadership of political parties. So the moment I see money is somewhere, I'm going to take advantage of them because in a way I've been brought up that way. Mm. That's one thing. Secondly, um, the, the, the issue of political parties, public funding, is rooted in the law. If you read the Political Parties and Organizations Act, uh, uh, Article 14a, 14A has uh, about four clauses. And uh, the four clauses talk about different things. The first, th there is a clause that talks about uh, funding to political parties with the representation in the parliament mm. <coughs> on numerical strength. But A says that political parties shall be funded, okay, to, shall be funded to manage their day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, right. Okay? So, and that should be equal funding, which I think Kenneth has been talking about. A lot in two years. Yes. Then two, it talks about funding based on numerical strength. Okay? In Parliament. C talks about equal funding in the year of elections. All right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so, looking at those three. Are all those done in the manner they should, except now that's, for... that's what I'm coming to. Yeah, except that's what I'm for coming the to. numerical strength, yes. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, we have had various discussions in iPod with various stakeholders, including EC. We, mm -hmm. for instance, were, uh, we met with the, the Secretary's General of Political Parties. Last week, we met with the, the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we raised to them is that the law of public funding, or the allocation of public funding to parties is not done in accordance with the law. Because there is supposed to be what comes even to political parties, even before you appropriate or, or you bring in the question of numerical strength. In one of the summit meetings, uh, we had the president and all the heads of the political parties. This issue came up. And one of the things we agreed then was that uh, from that chunk of funding, 70% should be committed to numerical strength in parliament. Then the other is done in accordance with, with you know, with what, uh, political uh, parties being, uh, share, getting an equal share to manage their day-to-day -day activities. And that, of course, would bring a certain level of, um, of you know, e uh, not equity in its strictest sense, but a little bit of it. And how about in the year of um, um, elections? Because that is where the political parties actually need the money the most. Yeah. In the year of elections, ideally, it should be that, uh, you know, the funding available <coughs> should be appropriated <coughs> equally. But that's not what has been happening. Mm -hmm. I even remember in 2021, it was raised. Mm -hmm. And the president said that uh, the Electoral Commission had done something unchristian. 
in, 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 um, in uh, providing parties with that funding based on numerical strength. But I also want to give you a little background. Uh, Simon here talked about it, like, you know, young political parties and all that. Before 2021, the, the funding available to political parties was a paltry 15 billion shillings. 15. And uh, so the political parties, the FDCs, the NRMs, all those that existed uh, during uh, the other turn of parliament shared 15 billion shillings. When uh, we crossed over uh, through the iPod you know, uh, arrangement, we, those discussions uh, brought forth an additional 30 billion to the current 45 billion. So, and of course, that in a way advantaged all parties. Like Kenneth was saying, if you look at the distribution, NRM takes a big chunk. Mm -hmm. But you know what <coughs> NUP is getting today is slightly bigger than what FDC was getting, largely because of the increment. That said and done, the issue of accountability will remain sticky. One of the things we used to do with the political parties, uh, uh, the old political parties, under the iPod arrangement, we would build their capacity to put in place accountability systems. We even trained accountants, treasurers, or people in, in, uh, in the financial department. Now, for some parties like NUP, they may be excused from that. And not because, not because they have uh, a, 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 a ticket to not being accountable. No, it's because, first of all, they are not members of iPod. And because of that, they were not able to benefit from that arrangement. However, even then, they should have the capacity as a party to put structures in place to ensure accountability. Because this is public funding that is, you know, um, that, that is subject to public funding, you know, uh, reg regulations. And again, like I said, we want to believe that this is also part of the structures of a functional political party. There may be no excuses whatsoever why the likes of NRM, uh, UPC, DP, Justice Forum, or even People's Progressive Party that are uh, within iPod to fail the, significant, the significance test of audit uh, in, in, in as far as the thresholds of, um, you know, uh, proper practices of audit are, are concerned. Mm -hmm. But NUP, I may not be able to speak so much because I don't know what happens there. Because they're not even members. They're not you members of You don't even iPod. have conversations with them. Well, we have uh, basic levels of conversations. We still believe that, you know, as all of us that are interested in the, in the sanity of politics in this country, we should have a certain platform that brings us together to discuss things okay. regardless of our outlook to All politics. right, I'll definitely be coming back to you, uh, Lawrence. I'd like to pick the mind of Moses on, yeah, the money has come through. It was agitated for. It did come through. But even when you're getting the money, you've refused to be a part of the same organization that brought up that. But that aside, accountability is key because everyone is being demanded for accountability. Young or older political party as you may be, why not? Like you demand from any other. Thank you very much. I am personally very excited about the conversation about corruption that we are having as a nation. It started with parliament and it is now spreading to political parties. And I am sure it will spread to so many other spheres of our society. Uh, there is a saying that uh, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Mm -hmm. You need light to drive out um, darkness. Uh, now, concerning political parties, by the way, I am personally believe the Electoral Commission has not uh, played its role. I have been in some discourses of uh, civil society groups, one of which is the Alliance for Finance Monitoring. They, one of their mandates is to actually monitor the money is spent by political parties and politicians and they have done a number of studies uh, about that but uh, in my interaction with them one of their major concern was that uh, you know political parties are supposed to submit accountability reports to the electoral commission and these reports actually 
the members of the public are, if they want, they are supposed to access these reports because these political parties are public entities. Mm. <coughs> but uh, the civil society groups were complaining that uh, they made several attempts to request for these accountability reports from, from uh, the Electoral Commission and the reports were not availed to them, mm. which, is, uh, which is very uh, unfortunate. Actually, even the Electoral Commission, for us who keep reading the reports of the Auditor General, the Electoral Commission as an institution is one of the institutions that actually keep having a number of uh, audit queries. Um, so the Electoral Commission has not helped us as a country to ensure that we hold all these political parties accountable because they are certainly using uh, uh, public finances and uh, it would greatly help us as a country in the battle against corruption and ensuring that public finances, wherever they are put, are properly managed. So the Electoral Commission should help us in this battle to always avail these reports. But also uh, something I wanted to say, the, the, the draft report that has been written about that we are discussing has not yet been uh, officially released by the Auditor General. So um, I am sure... But we know that at, there have been at, accountability at, at, issues, at, 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 even with the other parties that have existed. Of course, all, <coughs> all the political parties we have in the country have... Uh, accountability issues, um, mm. partly because our multi-party democracy is still at its infancy stage, but also uh, not only political parties, all the institutions in this country, uh, we still have a long way to go to build very strong and accountable public institutions, even when it comes to some churches, by the way, that mm. uh, there are some uh, faith-based public institutions where money is collected and uh, there are no books of accounts. Uh, the pastors do, do not account for that money, and we've seen some of them actually using those church collections to, um, uh, to, for self-aggrandizement, build bungalows and the, to enrich themselves. So One would uh, say maybe the sources are different, not to justify that they're not supposed to account for what the they public. do. It is from the public. These are collections <laughs> from members of the public, from citizens. Okay, yes. okay. So we... We, it is still, uh, we still have a long way to go as a country. But for me, I am very happy that we are having this conversation as a country because, okay. uh, like Martin Luther said, it takes good people to keep quiet for evil, to, to triumph say. in society. So mm -hmm. I am sure as we continue having this conversation, uh, it will keep spreading to the different spheres of our society. I can give you an example. In the last general elections, uh, a lot of money was used by political parties and political individuals who were contesting a lot of money. In fact, ACFIM, the Alliance for Finance Monitoring, said uh, more than three trillion uh, was used. And uh, for the ruling party, the party in power, the NLM, they estimated that their presidential candidate, President Yoel Seven, used more than 900 billions. Uh, but we also know that uh, NLM candidates at different levels. It's, there are even some regions where it is worse, like the Western region, by the way. They use a, a lot of money for them to, to win their way to parliament and okay. other uh, positions. So, but you see, when you have uh, politicians using a lot of money to bribe voters to win their support, it means uh, that uh, when they get into offices, they will be tempted to steal public finances to recover the money they spent, and you end up having uh, a political class that is corrupt. <clears throat> and when you have uh, a political class that is corrupt, it is very, there are high chances that every other sphere of society will be corrupt because it is the political class that is in charge of the country. So I am not surprised that we are in a situation where all other spheres, whether they are religious institutions and all other institutions, the, the rate of corruption is very high. All right, uh, but we still won't be able to condone corruption because it is rampantly spreading. That's why we need but, to keep speaking. But, but we'll be getting into the, um, the conversation on how best we can get to change the situation. Um, I know also Kenneth was talking about the 
the way the money is shared and Simon seem to be totally, totally not in agreement with him. But we'll delve into that shortly when we do return from the break. All right, welcome back from the break and thank you for keeping it NBS Television. We're still having a conversation on political party accountability with regard to the monies given to them under the Public uh, Parties and Organizations Act. And uh, one of the biggest conversations uh, that seems to have come out is the manner of how the money is shared. But it is clearly stipulated in the Public um, Political Parties and Organizations Act. Only that, as had clearly been mentioned by Lawrence, the other provisions are actually not being followed. And Lawrence, I would actually like to get to that. Um, as Still, because that is also not being accountable if you cannot be able to follow the way the law is actually stipulated. Yes, numerical strength that is being dealt with. But is the money given when it is supposed to be given in the electoral year, shared equally, and any other provisions, and why not? Because that is also being accountable. Yeah, thank you, Mirabli. Uh, it is true that, um, like I, I hinted earlier, the, the other two provisions of, um, of funding to political parties are not yet in actualized. effect actualized. Mm. Mm. But again, like I said, we are in discussions with EC um, to, to, to see that you know, some of these things are, are done. Um, EC has advised us to, to uh, put this to writing, question the rationale uh, that they use, especially in the year of elections and uh, the day-to-day -day management of political parties. But there's one important thing, aside from that, that we need to know. Mm. The, the formula that is questioned is a derivative of the public opinion of political parties. How? If you go, to, if you go out there, you are all seeking the mandate of the public. Mm -hmm. The public will say, Mildred, <clears throat> our mandate as, as a country is 50 percent. So if you have mandate up to 50 percent, what is the, 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 the basis for your agitation of 70 percent of the funding? So the, question, the issue here is a correlation between the public mandate or the trust that the, the, the public has given unto you and the money. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I think in their wisdom, the framers of the law said that, okay, the, 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 the volume you get will be in relation to what, your strength, to what your strength is before the public. And that's very, very important. Uh, mm. just, uh, just a minute. Oh, okay, okay I'll, give, I'll, I'll give a chance to, to, to Sir Simon. We need to look at the purpose of this money. Perhaps is what is disturbing our brain. Mm -hmm. This is not campaign money. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Mm. It is money to help parties run <laughs> their day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. When it comes in the fourth year, the last year of campaign, it is election money. Mm. And the law is clear that when we get into an election year, let everybody be given equal share. Equal share. This, this is what the law says, Kenneth. Okay. Just, just, just a minute, just a minute. You can will definitely be able to in get this back. This year, for example, in 2025, mm. uh, this coming year, all parties will e get an equal share. But even what you call equal is relative. It is equal in the eyes of who? Mm. It will not be fair for NRM, because practically speaking, the NRM has infrastructure all over the country. Structures everywhere. They mm. are presence everywhere. Some parties don't even have presence in other areas. So if NRM tells you I am spending money on renting offices and on paying permanent staff. In fact, NRM has permanent staff in district offices. So the money they need, if, even if you gave them what you call equal to this, is not, not sufficient. Even the 34 billion you are complaining about is not sufficient. I would love to see the NUP, the FDC, the DPUPC create similar structures and show that presence and therefore claim that they deserve this. Right. Kenneth knows. No, 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 no. Kenneth, wait. Wait. Mm. You listen. Wait. You're definitely going to be allowed. Uh, he will. I, I believe. Where else is it fair? Mm. We have been in the same class, in the same school, under the same head teacher and same teacher, same classroom, same space, same time, same notes, same everything. 
But when we come out to perform, it's you have 90, right. I have 30. All right. All right. Similarly, you. we are simply saying, mm. if you want to get this money, mm. if you want to get much, mm. perform better. Right. Even the voters voting for these political parties are not doing it equally. All right, thank you. PPP has one. Jema has one. Why are they not being that? We are saying, mm -hmm. oh, very many. Oh, Let us right. also have more. I, I understand. I understand it clearly. Okay. Can I, it's not a game can of I be allowed? Now? It is not a game. Right. You do, but you took off Lawrence's is, time. Is, I will still be no, able to do it. I, I, I didn't take his time. Excuse I only interjected. Excuse me. Yes. Politics. I, I want to tell you, Kenneth. Politics is not a game of money. That's why, on record, the NRM, going by Mr. Seven score, has mm. five million votes. NUP of Robert Chagula, on record, has 3.5 million votes. Thank you. But they're just telling you that Museveni had 900 right. billion. Thank you. And Chagula had less. Thank you, gentlemen. The voters know that's not about gentlemen, money. It's about aspirations. Gentlemen, I have understood you politics. clearly. And uh, like they say, you're entitled to your opinion. Now, this is my opinion. Like you are. To informed mm. opinion, not now. just opinion. <laughs> it should be informed opinion. No, that's. That, that's I protect that, you. That, 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 You've had your that, opinion. That's Kenneth, your opinion. Take your opinion. Now, let me tell you. Yes. I was in Parliament at the time this uh, matter was discussed. And I, I remember vividly the debate which was in the House. And I will tell you that this formula that we are looking at is one of the things that we would call a result of the tyranny of numbers. Because the NRM with its primacy in the House had their way, including at the time of voting, to ensure that this formula came to pass. I remember very well the struggle which was in that House as they discussed this issue. And the opposition political parties had insisted that this money needed to be shared equally. Mm. Now, mm. the problem my colleagues are making, they are forgetting the principle while this money was put in place and why it is being given. And from what I hear from their argument, they are simply saying that uh, the money is given depending on the strength you have as a some sort it is of to run uh, listen, political listen. parties listen. not to camp this is not now, election now, now, now listen to me go ahead now, now listen now, Simon, what is this Simon, now just a minute what is this now just Let's go be ahead civilized. Okay. I, you told me to keep quiet and Kenneth, go ahead submit. go ahead now, with your submission the principle is money is being given to political parties to you Kenneth, speak go now ahead. on my behalf it, it is okay go ahead you can Kenneth. submit on my behalf go ahead Kenneth money is being given to political parties and one of the reasons this thing came up was to try and create some level playing ground, level field, that we are all political parties, we are competing for power, we are all going to get taxpayers' money. We need to be provided money. Now, the difference between my colleagues and I is that for them, they think political parties are being given this money because of be, uh, some, like some sort of a reward for how they performed. No, 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 this, not Kenneth. It is let clear me in the law. Let me clearly, let no, me no, no, Kenneth, I want us to listen, also give information and I'm telling you, and to my, our my argument is I disagree with the formula which is in the law. It was agreed. It because is, listen, what it, is the reason the money is given? And I have, in told, your own you, opinion. And I have told you from the start mm. that that law was passed as a result of a tyrant of numbers because the numerical strength of the NRM in the house, they had to have it their way. Why is the money given, Kenneth? Maybe for the benefit Listen, of our viewers. I'm trying to tell you the it. argument was that the NRM had already an opportunity because it had already been in the power and it had money. It had done so many things and it was better off. So they said in order for us to enable these other political parties to be able to actively participate in the democratic space, we need also to allocate them money from the taxpayers. And in principle, one of the things they are trying to do is to avoid political parties from getting money from dirty sources. Foreign, yeah, you get yeah, it? Yeah. Now, if you don't give political parties equal funding, you are already giving an advantage to another political party. Let's forget this notion of saying that uh, uh, the NRM is being given because it has more numbers. That, that's suggesting that they are being rewarded. For me, I'm saying we had the past and we agreed the NRM had the numbers. Mm. But we are beginning now and we, we are saying political parties should be funded. Why don't we begin from a clean slate? Okay. Now, I want to respond to what uh, Simon Muyanga said, that we are in the same school, we are in a what, but the, the results taught are by different. the same teacher. Listen, the, th the principle is, are we being taught by the same teacher? Are you giving me an opportunity to be taught by the same teacher so that we can compete effectively? And so in this case, if the you're giving is NRM yes. 34 billion and you're giving these other political parties this little money, is that a principle of fairness? Are we being taught by the same teacher? Are we in the same school? We are basically not. You get it? The teacher for, me the principle, the for me, the principle is give people equal money. If you have decided you're going to give political parties money, and the threshold is the political party should be represented in the parliament. That should be the threshold. 
give them equal money so that these political parties should be able to work well so that in the next election they are better off. Kenneth, let me also Simon Moyanga suggests that Kenneth. this money is not for campaign. Now, he comes from a school of thought that a political party must wait for the electoral commission to announce that campaigns have now started. Kenneth, let me also, let me, let me also ask, too. as Polit Lawrence comes Listen, in. Political, campaign, political parties campaign every day. They no, no, recruit no, no. members, Kenneth, they print Kenneth, cards. Kenneth, they do all these let things. Let me also ask. Let me also ask you. Get you. It. Mm. Yes, the money is being given for day-to-day -day running of political activities. Those are administrat for different, administrative. For different political parties. Mm. Have a same level playing field, right? I have structures in 130 districts. You probably have structures in 10. Mm. Will it be equitable for, for, for us to receive the same amount of money? No, I'm not rewarding you. I am taking... It's not a reward. No, we are going to no, run our activity. No. Listen, listen. I'm not, I don't want to... I, don't, I want you to walk away from the principle of giving somebody more taxpayers' money just because they already have bigger... The principle, the principle is a level... The, the principle, the voters, the the principle is a level... The, the know, principle yeah. is a level... Okay, I'll, I'll, have Lawrence, I'll have Lawrence conclude his give thoughts. Me, give, yeah. me so, 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 give me five billion. Give me five billion. Kenneth, give Kenneth let's give Lawrence some time. No, Kenneth, let's give Lawrence some time. No, listen. Let's give Lawrence some time, Kenneth. Give me five billion. Give Lawrence five billion, and then let us go there. And do our structures. Go ahead, I, I think, I, think I, I think, Mildred, Kenneth is missing a point which is very, very critical. Mm. And the principle is um, while you are speaking of equity, politics is not about equity. Ah, absolutely. Politics is not about equity. The realities. Politics, and, and, and this is why I want to be a realist. Politics, the, the fundamental principle of politics or underlying politics is democracy. And when we talk about democracy, that's why there are aspects of numbers. Numbers. It's numbers. That's so whether the numbers, it's numbers. Uh, one of the philosophers asked a question, Plato asked, hmm. what if the majority are the fools? Yes. It still remains that's a democracy. It still that's remains. Democracy. The question so, is, so, where so, are those numbers so, beginning? So the thing here is... Uh. That, when are uh, you beginning to fund political Kenneth, parties? Can we just what, listen to each other? Let's what, have Lawrence come and what, definitely what, come what back I to want, what I, what I want to debunk from uh, what Kenneth is saying is that across the world, across the world, if we have embraced democracy, maybe what we need to discuss here is the Western democracy that we are speaking about, where we are talking of, in his words, the tyrant of numbers. Mm. Is it what <coughs> is working Applicable. for us? Yeah. If it's not, then what is the alternative? Otherwise, at the, po at, the, at the moment, for as long as we still believe that we need things to do, or, I mean, breaking the jinx of, uh, of, of impasses with the simple majorities in, the, in, in democracy, that is what we are going to, to go with. But also, um, I also want to debunk the fact that he thinks this is like rewarding. It's not about rewarding. But that's what you're saying. Because no, 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 no. So, because so, so has more numbers, what they I'm should saying, be given more money. Uh, that's your argument. Let me give you an example. And I'm saying for me the principle is we are all competing for that same I will space. Give you an example. We should be given right. the same money so Kenneth, that we, Kenneth, we let's, learn to let's compete. respect each other's opinions. Uh, let's, no, that's what I'm doing. Uh, let one speak and then the other will yeah. be able to. So, the, 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 um, I was talking to one of, uh, I was talking to the chairperson of the Electoral Commission of NUP. Hmm. She told me they fronted in the last elections, they fronted 139 parliamentary candidates. Mm -hmm. Out of the 139, they got 57 members of parliament. Okay? Mm. Now, if you juxtapose that with NRM that fronted literally in every constituency across, okay? Mm. That, that starting point already speaks to something. Aye. Okay? What it speaks to is uh, that, look. Discuss uh, it from the point of view of money. Yes. I, you yeah, have, I'm speaking, you have I, your... I'm speaking. I want him to connect it to the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the politics is not about money. No, Kenneth. no, no. So, no, 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 no Kenneth, so. Kenneth, let Lawrence conclude because now. Moses what, has been we are silent about for money. One of the reasons, one of money. the reasons probably why NUP was not supposed to front candidates across the country is their limited, their limited funding, funding available. Mm. Okay. So it was not funding. There were no uh, no, 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 there. no, no, no. I, 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 I don't know. No, no, no. I don't want to say. Kenneth, Kenneth, we have Kenneth, had, we have Kenneth had this and Simon. Where no Kenneth, people people are are Kenneth, that's Simon disrespectful. That if we're not going to listen to each other, Kenneth and Simon. Kenneth and Simon, let's listen. I don't know whether they didn't have people or not. That's not my argument. My argument is. Conclude your argument, Lawrence. We need to take a break. My argument is that look, 
the, the public funding available mm -hmm. should, should not, and this is where Kenneth's problem is, he is erroneously equating it to a reward. No, but I, what I am also saying is that... You are the one who is, you are putting words in my mouth. I didn't say you is, are the one. Okay, okay. The ones who I'll are hold Lawrence, I'll hold is, Kenneth. Is, is Moses, let me have your view. You are the ones who are equating it to a reward. Simon and Kenneth, you are the ones who are equating it to a reward based on the past performance. Let's give Moses, take your time. You see, this is business that will give everybody equal business. I think uh, Lawrence and Simon are discussing basing on wrong assumptions, especially when they talk about numbers. Uh, and that is why, by the way, as a country, we need to have uh, a serious conversation on the issue of uh, electoral and constitutional reforms. Because uh, mm -hmm. the, Which he also hinted, the, the numbers that uh, the ruling party boasts of are uh, an outcome of, of so many factors uh, and in some instances unfairness to the political parties they compete with. Uh, you, like I told you the Alliance for Finance Monitoring in their report about the uh, money that was spent in 2021, it was more than 3.9 trillion. We've just talk, been talking about uh, only 45 billion from, uh, from, from that, that is given to the political parties. So already the, the, the ground is not leveled. The, according to these reports and um, the many stakeholders, of course, there is a high likelihood that the ruling party actually uses, uh, it, it dips the hand into the national coffers and uses public finances uh, to do campaigns and uh, get those numbers. But also there are many other factors including um, the, 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 the freedom of political parties to mobilize uh, and look for those numbers. All of us have been seeing reports of many instances when, uh, uh, for example, NUP, when they go to other regions where they are perceived not to have support and their activ activities are disrupted. As we speak now, there are so many political prisoners, uh, especially from the opposition, that we, uh, we are arrested and uh, are yet to be, to be released. So we need to also consider the political environment in which uh, these political parties are, are operating. And that is why as a country, many of us think we certainly need to have uh, a national dialogue, to have a conversation for constitution and the uh, electoral reforms that will do culminate into uh, the country having uh, a, a leveled playing field where political parties can freely and fairly compete for uh, political positions. Without that, uh, of course, uh, many of the numbers that we are talking about and the factors, the arguments that my colleagues, especially Simon and Lawless, would be based on wrong assumptions. So if we are serious about uh, building vibrant political parties that are competing fairly, these are the issues that we, where we need to dwell more efforts and discuss. Mm. Unfortunately, but as Lawless, I conclude, as I conclude, unfortunately, in the earlier <coughs> elect election roadmap, the Electoral Commission had released, they had proposed that uh, electoral reforms would ha uh, were supposed to have been enacted in the financial year that has just ended, that ended the, in June 2023, uh, 2024 financial year. But the financial year ended when we had not seen any proposals from the opposition, from, 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 go from government, uh, even the civil society has been keeping quiet. So as a nation, me, I, I strongly believe that, that is the direction that we are supposed to take. We need to have a national dialogue, a national conversation for the necessary mm. uh, electoral and constitutional reforms. We all remember the reports that were released by the election observers in the last general elections. Many of them raised the red flag that the elections were not free uh, and fair. You, you, we all remember that... Uh, uh, especially for the opposition parties, the, the police and the army were always escorting them with, uh, they were firing bullets and tear gas. Uh, it was very chaotic. And uh, I would not want that as a country, we get back into that as we move into the next general elections. So okay. this is the conversation that I believe we need to have. 
All right, and uh, we will want to take a very short commercial break because still the next conversation that is coming through about elections does encompass discussions about preparedness of political parties, the level playing field of various political parties ahead of the 2026 general elections. Let's get back. A very good morning and thank you so much for keeping it NBS Television. It's still the Morning Breeze, your most authoritative morning current affairs show. And on Friday, yes, this is the kind of mode that we get to have because as journalists, we get to express opinions about the different stories that have made headlines. Now, because of a number of issues, including funding, yes, very key at that, the um, Electoral Commission decided to make amendments into its electoral uh, roadmap. Remember, I think they had launched the electoral roadmap as early as uh, 2023 at the start, which was a record time for them to be able uh, to prepare. And as these come through, also is a conversation about the various electoral amendments that have been talked about to create what we've continuously talked about previously, a level playing field. Uh, Moses, this time, I want to start with you and give you an opportunity um, on the amendments vis-a-vis -vis the kind of playing field, which we were also talking about, uh, to give everyone an opportunity to participate fairly. First of all, there, there is a, a report I recently read on the website of the U.S. Embassy in Uganda. And uh, they were actually raising concerns about Uganda's last general elections. Mm -hmm. And um, they were actually saying they have plans to take action, including sanctions against uh, different uh, players that are uh, involved in organizing what they called fraud elections. According to them, the elections we had in 2021 were fraudulent. So, uh, uh, but uh, we also remember that, the, like I said, the reports that came from the different observers, but we were also observers, all of us, we know what happened. So it would have been very important as a country, by the way, to have uh, a serious conversation about the necessary constitution and electoral reforms uh, uh, and uh, for me, I, I believe President Yoel Museven also has a role to play. After being in power for 40 years, I come from Luel, where the, the war was fought from, and thousands of our people uh, died when they were fighting for democracy. So it is very unfortunate that uh, f nearly 40 years down the road, uh, what was fought for has not been realized because we still have concerns about uh, elections getting rigged. So, but also, I, many people hear them blaming the, the opposition that they have not done enough to push for constitutional and electoral reforms. But of course, this, is, this should not be left to the opposition alone. The civil society needs to play a role. The religious leaders have been quiet, quiet for so long. They need to, to play a role to push for the necessary constitutional and electoral reforms. And, uh, and, but of course, the opposition especially, because they are fighting to take over power, mm. they ought to have been more uh, aggressive and more serious about this issue. In fact, by now, they would be having a joint platform working together towards uh, such issues but also planning to see how they can work together to improve their numbers. Because in the last three, four general elections that we've been having, the numbers have not been, uh, they have not been changing. When you look at the numbers that the opposition has in parliament, in local governments, and their performance in the presidential uh, race. Other challenges, of course, not withstanding, including the political environment, but uh, the, the opposition have not done enough to prepare for these uh, forthcoming uh, general elections because we have very few months, by the way, that are left. And uh, unfortunately, some opposition leaders like Dr. Kiza Vesije have been preaching uh, uh, against elections, demobilizing Ugandans to lose interest in elections, saying uh, uh, elections uh, cannot change anything, you mm. cannot change leadership for as long as President M7 is still in power. But that kind of thinking and campaign only, of course, uh, it creates advantage for the ruling party. Because if you demobilize citizens and you tell them to lose hope in elections, 
It means the voter apathy will be very high. You will have a big population of Ugandans who will not turn up to vote. And uh, the ruling party, since they are in their structures alone, they have more than 2 million people across the country. It, will mean, it means they will have an advantage when they enter uh, that general election. So yeah. the different key players, the civil society, uh, political parties, even the religious leaders. In the past, the religious leaders used to play a very leading role. In, in DRC, we saw religious leaders even getting to the streets and protesting against Kabila's <coughs> plans to cling on power. And eventually, actually, they were able to overcome and the Kabila was convinced to step aside. So okay. uh, all of us have a, a role to play in building a more democratic Uganda that is well governed. Uh, because we've had so many challenges in the past, and these challenges, the, the chaos that we've had, the tear gas, the bullets that are fired, are also hurting our economy. Because when the foreigners see such things, it scares away potential investors and tourists from coming to our country. So this is a conversation that we need to have a country. All of us from across the political divide because it is for the good of our country. All right, thank you very much. Sir Simon, you've definitely directly participated in elections. And when we talk about amendments in an electoral roadmap and yet link them to one of the other issues being funding, it, it begs the question of whether elections are such an important activity for a country like Uganda, because they're periodic. We know the time when elections are supposed to be happening. So for us to say we don't have the money creates a different conversation, because I, I actually just remembered that we haven't had the LC elections. We've just kept having, uh, you know, um, extensions, but it was known that in a period of five years, that's the tenure of a leader. To the contrary, I am very happy with the Electoral Commission, and I want to commend them for a job well done. Okay. You know, there is a mistake that many Ugandans make. We want the Electoral Commission to participate in the politicking. Mm. Yet their role is a midwifery role. Today, I believe so from what I have observed across the country, that there is more confidence in the Electoral Commission from the following. Okay, because I was about to, use, uh, to ask using what threshold? Uh, number one, the whole country is aware that the Electoral Commission will conduct elections in 2026. Lawrence and Kenneth, you on air when you whisper. And, 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 and they are preparing <laughs> yeah. with the confidence that this will indeed happen. From the time Mr. <clears throat> Bayakama passed the test of conducting elections during the COVID period, where majority of us expected there would be no elections, and even if there were no elections held, it would, was justifiable, the Electoral Commission went ahead and held elections. If you observe very well, the Electoral Commission is on course as provided for in the law. Mm. Very on course. The Electoral Commission is not politicking, but regularly updating the country and every player that we are doing this, we will do this then, and much of what they say will be done. I cannot blame the Electoral Commission for not conducting LC elections. I would be naive in that case. The Electoral Commission was ready, and this mm. is ready today to conduct LOC1 elections. But the country, the government, has not provided resources. And, and, and the law is clear. Who provides resources? The law does not provide for Biabakama to go and sell his cows or for the PROs of the uh, uh, Electoral Commission to go mm. and sell their houses and mm. conduct elections. Okay. So as far as the Electoral Commission's mandate is concerned, I want to commend them. They are on course. Everybody is aware of what is taking place. While we are busy fighting each other in political parties, in NUP, in FDC, elsewhere, for them, they are very clear on their role. And I think uh, Dr. Besige and the other players who demanded that they wanted the chairman of the Rector Commission to be somebody who is a high court judge or at a level of a high court judge hmm. are getting exactly that. Mr. Seven gave them a judge. You know that Biabakama is a judge. He gave them a judge, and we have seen how judges conduct business. I am happy with how Biabakama and the Electoral Commission are conducting their business. It is us, the political players outside, who are not doing our part. And incidentally, we expect 
the director commission should help us outside here in politicking. Yet their role is not politicking. Their role is to organize for us. Let me tell you, Mildred, it is one thing for a man's mind to sleep aware that the following day, I have all what is required for my family to run. The peace you have in sleep, the confidence you have, is different from one who sleeps worried that today we have finished this day. Shall we finish the following day? Ugandans are aware, first electoral commission updated us last month that we want to tell Ugandans that the government has provided the funding for election activities this year. So we are all aware that the money is available. So elections will be held. Okay. Yesterday, they gave us a roadmap that we intend to conduct the business of preparing elections in this order. And they keep calling us, let whoever has issues to raise about, how we are, about this roadmap come up. I no longer see those uh, poli powerful politicians, intellectual politicians, who would come up and say they are giving an opposition opinion to the roadmap or their demand for electoral reforms. In fact, the time we have spent demand for electoral reforms, we have spent it on fighting Puga, on fighting Senyonyi, on fighting Nandala, on fighting Besije. And we believe that while we are fighting those, the electoral mission is politicking on our behalf, that when we go back to the ground, there will be more votes for FDC or more votes for NUP. No. To me, honestly is speaking in broad daylight. Okay. I want to commend the electoral commission and this leadership under Biavakama, even the pressure on it has reduced. The much noise about the commission has reduced. Whatever they have not done is what they have not been able to do because of problems caused by other political, by other players like government and funding, Minister of Finance and funding, Parliament and enacting electoral reforms. Who so is supposed to enact electoral reforms? Okay, thank the you. The electoral commission this is the parliament. Thank you. So to me, it's. 100%. Okay. Uh, Ken, <laughs> Kenneth has been nodding in disagreement for quite a period of time, but Kenneth, I'd like you to give your view on the amendments, but also just the electoral space, which has been very, very clear. Is there a level playing ground? Do we have these reforms? Will they come through or not? Or even if they don't come through, won't we have an election? I hope you're talking about the amendment of the roadmap. Yes, exactly. Now, of course, we know why the roadmap is being amended, because the Electoral Commission has not been well funded to undertake some of the activities it, it wanted to do so. That's one of the reasons. And one of the things I loved about the Electoral Commission was the uh, outreach they were doing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we've seen them going across the region. Because one of the biggest things that um, is missing in our country is uh, civic education. Well, I know you're going to say that uh, civic ed education is not a mandate of the uh, um, uh, Electoral Commission. It's a mandate of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, but we know that side is not funded. So at uh, the Electoral Commission, there's some semblance of civic education, but it, comes in, but it comes in form of voter education. And uh, in there, at least people are able to, to get some semblance or to understand what they are supposed to do, their responsibility when it comes to elections. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at a possibility that at the time when we needed that to be heightened, they are going to slow in, in that particular region, area because of, of funding. Now, on the issue of the <coughs> uh, electoral reforms, uh, like that, that my colleagues have hinted on, um, the Electoral Commission, when it released this roadmap, uh, they announced the best date at which the electoral reforms should be in. Now, we all know that um, according to our legislative style and agenda, business that comes from the, uh, the executive takes precedent because then there's that backing of a certificate of financial implications, but also um, given our setup, the, 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 the executive is more listened to Mm. than the opposition. We have seen attempts in the past by the opposition to actually table bills, and we know what happened. Um, but, but at the back of the mind, I think it's the nature of politics that prevails in our country. Um, is there a desire across the board to actually make elections in Uganda better, to address the pitfalls that have been around, that have been documented for, for so many years? Sometimes uh, you, you don't need even to waste a lot of time to go and do research and do so many other things. Some of these things have already been condensed in some sort of um, uh, uh, writings, and it's very clear what we need to do to be able to make elections better in the country. There's a citizens' compact uh, which was prepared some time back. Mm. back. It mm. was taken to Parliament. At, at that time, Commissioner at the Electoral Commission, Stephen Tashovia, 
was the chairperson of the par parliamentary um, committee, uh, legal and parliamentary affairs, which was dealing with these uh, reforms. They looked at that um, compact and they said, this is exactly what the country needs. And then they said, unfortunately, we do not have enough time to consider all these things, but this is what we want. So they took a decision and said, we are going to save it. And the moment we come back from elections, this is the first thing that will handle. When we came back from the elections and the parliament was sworn in, the Honorable Stephen Mukitali, Mr. Uh, uh, Dialogue, who was one of those people who supported the initiative by the civil society to collect views from across the country to come out with that compact, raised the matter and said, now that we are back, we need to handle electoral and constitutional amendments well ahead of time so that the Electoral Commission can prepare to implement. Because even right now, when you see what the Electoral Commission is telling you, it's too late for them to implement some of those reforms mm. because they did not factor the, the activities, the things that they're supposed to undertake into the budget. So Mkitale said, let's handle the things right now. That's when we learned actually that uh, the business had not been saved, despite the fact that on the floor of the house, the chairperson of the committee then said we had decided to save the business. So it's just the treachery and uh, the, 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 the unwillingness to address the issues, the pitfalls that keep on coming up mm. in, in the election process that we have. Well, Simon raised the issue of the Electoral Commission enjoying, um, uh, what did you call it? Enjoy some semblance of um, trust, uh, trust um, uh, across, the, uh, across the country. There's growing confidence, There's in, growing confidence in, in it. I, I don't know if that is true, uh, because you still hear people are talking about how the Electoral Commission was constituted, how it was not a, a consultative process. Because, I mean, if you're going to have people competing in an election and uh, they need to have a say, I'm not saying that an opposition person should be represented on the Electoral Commission or an NRM person should be represented, but we know some of those people are on the Commission are NRM card holders. But, but, but for why, instance, why, why, excuse me, Kenneth, why does the issue of wrongly constituting the, 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 the Electoral Commission come up when it's about elections and when they are going to get money from the Electoral Commission, you have just been saying the Electoral Commission has funded everybody. So when is it wrongly constituted? But the money, when it is giving out that, the money? That, that money is That's within the law. It, it is the within the, the law. It's within the law. Even the constitution of the Electoral Commission is within the law. The money is within the law. Even the constituting of the is in the law. Which the, one was wrongly done? Listen. What does the law say the, that the, was wrongly done? The Electoral done? Commission just dispenses the money. It is not the one that gives the it's a conduit. money. Like it dispenses. Whether it, or, it, no, whether it, it likes it, whether it likes, whether it likes, listen, thing. whether it likes it or not, it, it is supposed to give this money manner. to the political yeah. party. And because, whether you okay. like it or well, not, the political party must no, consult an electoral listen, commission. Listen, listen. Thank you, Kenneth. We are not a debate about the constitution of the electoral commission. And it has come through. What experts have been saying here, both local. Why do you think the commissioners are too NRM? Can you stop the heckling? Constituting them and they are not NRM. Sorry, Simon. Simon, listen to Kenneth. We have Kenneth. We have we have we have had election observers here, international and local. They have all talked about how the electoral commission has been constituted here. We have heard from experts, constitutional lawyers. We have heard even from government people themselves who actually say, well, that should be the, the way we do it. But uh, unfortunately, it the, the law does not say that at the moment. We, we know how we look up to what is happening in Kenya. Public scrutiny of people are going to be on the commission. And you think Kenya that, is very stable? That's what people are looking at. At least there is some more confidence. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very here. much, Kenneth. And uh, I'll give the last few uh, minutes to Lawrence really on did. amendments because that tags on to funding, which is a very key aspect if we're going to talk about democracy because democracy is an expensive venture. Yeah. Thank you, Mildred. Um, first of all, I think it's, it's common knowledge to all that uh, amendment, talking of am amendments at this point in time, uh, targeting the elections in 2026 is far-fetched. It looks like uh, we've run out of time, although there could still be a window, but uh, the, the best time frame should have been at least two years, like we did during the last, um, in the last elections. Amendments were passed in 2019, and that was quite timely. It gave time to the commission and the other stakeholders to, to do a few things. But uh, heading into the next gen elections, you know, uh, a product is as good as a process through which it is, you know, uh, it is produced. And um, when the Electoral Commission amends its roadmap, it's, it definitely speaks to the fact that there are a few challenges 
that were encountered along the way in implementing the first roadmap. Mm. When we met with the commission last week, one of the things that uh, all struck us was uh, the fact that the commission has only 400 million to do voter education across the country. <laughs> 400 million. And uh, I know some activities have happened. Um, 400 million would basically be something like, if you, if you moved around the country, four regional meetings, it's all done. But this is something that is expected to go on across or all, all through the process. Now, um, that in itself speaks a lot. I do not think it would be right to blame the commission because it put out a roadmap that it expected would yield the results to the satisfaction of everyone. And the, 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 the realization of the results under that roadmap was attached to availability of funding, which unfortunately has not, been, has not come through. Now, as far as public trust in the, uh, in, the, in the elections is concerned, I think it is also wrong for us to put all the blame on electoral commission because it is a process and there are various actors. The electoral commission happens to be one of the actors. The political parties are, we ourselves, the media, you play a role, a significant role. So um, I do not want to say that uh, the, the trust in the elections should be targeted to the electoral commission because parties have done a lot. Electoral commission is not there when people are fighting. Mm -hmm. In the last elections, there was, uh, we saw an, a, new, uh, a new conflict frontier in Intungam. Okay? No. It's, a, it's now a, a new hotspot. There is even anticipation that in 2026 it's going to be. Hitherto, it's been largely in areas of metropolitan Kampala and a few other areas. So, I, I think we all have an equal stake in ensuring that uh, there is trust in the process, because if we do not trust the process, then we cannot trust the results of the mm. elections. All right, thank you very much. And uh, definitely we'll continue making a lot more conversation with regard to the electoral process because that seems to be where we are. We have just a few months before political parties can actually start uh, going through with their um, primaries and then on to the nomination by the Electoral Commission. But unfortunately, that's all the time that we could be able to have. Thank you very much, Moses Mulondo, for sparing time. Uh, to come through. Lawrence, it's been a pleasure having you and your insights. Uh, Kenneth Anderson Lukwago, thank pleasure you. For, being here. Thank you for always coming through. And Sir Simon Muyangal I think you can continue the conversation after the show. We, we can go to the home base. Thank you to our viewers, well, for always making time for us. That's all we had time for. I'm Mildred Tohai. Say good morning. God bless you.